If you'd have been any later, you'd have had set up here. Okay, I think we'll call the meeting to order. We're going to open as we always do with the pledge to your flag. Tammy, do we have certificates or no? They will be. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to start today by uh, I want to recognize four of our employees. And um, I think I'll just have you stand since we got to do the social distancing. Uh, Cindy Barnett began with the county 30 years of service. So thank you, Cindy. Enjoy retirement. Randy Delier began with the county in 1988. Was that as a, a dispatcher or a deputy? Okay, okay, I, I couldn't remember. 32 years of service. He'll, he's our outgoing uh, a coroner. Thank you, Randy. Linda Jones, not present. Okay, Linda's, Linda's been with the, the county for 29 years. And Laurel Schroeder started with the county in 2013, seven years of service. And are you bidding us to do also? Okay, well, thank you very much. How about a nice hand for all these people? Well, I'm already stuck. I don't know what we do about the, the attorney. Huh? About the attorney report. Terry and get him so he can leave. What? Do Terry and he so he can leave. Oh. <laughs> can you hear me? Oh, yes. There we go. I'm I'm here. I just I I needed somebody to unmute me. So, um, could you guys hear me okay? Hang on. Try it again. I, I'm here. Can you guys hear me okay? As good as we're gone, I think. Okay. All right. Well, I don't have a whole lot to report other than the, the Title VI policy that Bill and Lori worked on. I worked on that with them to get it uh, ready to go and it's ready for your adoption. Um, other than that, I don't have anything else to report, I don't believe, unless you guys have okay. questions for me. Okay. Well, I, I, I wasn't sure who was going to bring up the Title VI policy, so apparently you did. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. Uh, I, all right. I would entertain a motion to approve the 2020 uh, Title VI plan. By some will we approve it. And the motion, I will second. Discussion. Uh, George, are you here? He's on there. <laughs> I'm not sure. I you think you have to like unmute him, Jana. That's how it will let us unmute ourselves. It has to be. <laughs> I think he 
I think he connected in a different way because I can't unmute him. Okay. Can you have him him? Okay. I don't have an option. Uh, I don't understand technology, so I can't do it. Okay. All right. We do have a motion to second on the floor. I'll call for a vote. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, say sorry. Thank you. Nathan, flat approval. And I think you're going to carry in the, to uh, another So I actually have two flats. Start with the simpler one first. This is a one lot flat to be called Miami Ridge, located up on. What is that? 600 North in Smith Township. Uh, this was approved by the Planning Commission uh, back in August. They had a minor modification, came back then to add a little acreage. So now they're actually ready to move forward with it. Um, this is a very long flag lot. Uh, as you look at the flat, <clears throat> it does dedicate right away though, as we usually see. Mr. Chairman, I move we approve this Miami Ridge uh, okay. lot. And I will second that. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Thank you. Okay. The other one I have is um, good to see finally after about six years, I think, if not longer. It's the next section of Lincoln Point, section five. Uh, they are done with development and we have a maintenance, we have a maintenance bond for the streets. Uh, and I believe we have everything else we need as well, Brandon. Okay. Uh, so this will be accepting and approving the plat as well as accepting the maintenance bond uh, associated with the plat. Uh, this is, um, like I said, next section, it does include a small cul-de-sac that includes lots for duplexes, uh, which is a little unusual um, out there. They did get special exception for that a while back. Um, it's a product they want to try out. They think that it will do well. So, okay. Oops, oh, it's growth, like growth. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, if you want to make a motion, it has to kind of be two two motions. Or... Well, I may reprove the, the the Lincoln Point Section Five uh, re, re, new plot and the maintenance bond. Well, does that need to be separate? Uh, as far as I'm concerned, unless Matt feels like they need to be separate, they could be together. Okay, and the maintenance agreement with the. Okay with the county. Now, which one of these uh, lines are we supposed to? Um, they gave you four lines for three people. It's down in the bottom. Okay. Uh, I'm yeah. going to second your motion and then I'm going to call for a vote. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the last item of business I have, um, I emailed to you guys. Uh, Joe Wolf has been uh, appointed as the alternate to the BZA. He was appointed several years ago, and for the last year, he's been serving since Liz Beckers kind of shut down um, at the beginning of the year. And just to clean up the membership roster, um, it would be nice just to make him the full BZA member uh, rather than operating as an alternate. And then we, if the commissioners can want to, they can appoint a, a new alternate later. We just don't have anybody okay. at this point. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I move we appoint Joe Wolf as a BZA member. Okay, we have a motion on the floor to appoint Joe Wolf as a BZA member. I'll second that motion. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Thank you. What about Dave? Dave Johnson. Oh, that was for the, 
drainage, and we already did that. Oh, plus. No, I thought I saw that name. I thought I saw that name work. That, that's take care of them. Yeah. I'm sorry. Right. Okay. Cool. Sorry. Didn't mean to make you panic. <laughs> you had that panic it, look on your face. It's okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, sure. Okay, next on the agenda, we have Terry Burnworth with uh, Pyramid. We've used Pyramid to uh, help us with uh, some broadband stuff, and uh, he's been working on communication stuff for us. So I think you're going to give us a, a report, right? So I said here, no, that's right. Let yeah. me use the mic, please. Yeah. Here's the hard copies, too. Thank you. Sweater. Look at that sweater. <laughs> I've got one, but I gotta use it right now. Okay. Um, my name is Terry Burnworth, president of uh, Pyramid Consulting. Um, well, I just had a couple dozen slides here I want to go through. The commissioners had asked me to review the public safety communication system for um, Whitley County, um, which is, you know, also known as the, the sheriff's radio system. So let's go ahead and move to the first slide there. Um, four things that I'll go through. I shortened this from the actual study. Um, gentlemen, you've seen longer evaluations. Uh, there's sort of an ad hoc committee that we put together, uh, which included the sheriff's department, dispatch, as well as the executive body, um, to go through um, the problems that have been occurring on the public safety communication system. Next slide. What I want to do very quickly is so that everybody understands, we're going to go through two different solutions here. Uh, one is a short-term solution because there's a dire need right now. The other one will be a long-term solution, okay? Um, one thing that you'll find out, I lecture throughout the country in Canada on public safety communication systems, and there's been a major change just in the past three years, I would say, on what's happening. And that will be included in your long-term solution. And what's important to see on this slide is that in the past, um, a dispatcher, for example, all they're concerned with is that Radio transmissions out, radio transmissions in. That's all they're concerned with. That's not the way it is now. There are communication systems that we're putting in. As a matter of fact, one that I'm doing for Kosciuszko County, that they will have VHF 7800 system, as well as 4.9 gigahertz on the microwave, and they will also have LTE systems integrated into theirs, basically cell phones, okay? Because that's where a lot of things are migrating to but uh, you have to be able to secure it because it is public safety. Next slide. Um, I tend to be a very tangible kind of person and I wanna, you know, we're talking about radio frequencies and everybody thinks, oh, ambiguity. No, it's, it's real, you know. The radio frequencies that you're dealing with on the right side there, I, I simplify it. You do have other license, but um, you're in the VHF range, which the PD primarily uses 155, and the fire departments primarily use 159. Now, this is all the spectrum that the United States has. Basically, it's the same anywhere. <laughs> That's the frequencies. And we operate basically under what's called VHF, which is 150 range, which you do. And then there's UHF, which is like the 460 range. You'll see that with a lot of hospitals and things, and, and, and telesupport things, you know, for for lifelines, okay? And then you have the system that actually has been migrating for the past 20 years to, which is digital, which is called the 7 slash 800 megahertz range. It's a shorter wave. I mean, I think of things very physical. A VH web is, is six feet long, make a whole wave. A 7800 is 14 inches long. 
okay so it penetrates things better okay so that's that's really the way you got to think about it and these have all been set aside specifically for public safety nobody else is allowed to use them next slide what becomes important here as you're going through like i said we're going to do a short-term solution we're going to do a long-term solution is that there's several vendors out there because there's a thing called p25 project 25 under apco that actually made things more equal for people before that project 25 everything was very proprietary i mean could you imagine as an example an lte i use at&t good or bad verizon tends to be a very rural carrier but what if i couldn't talk to somebody on a, that has that uses verizon as a vendor or that uses t-mobile or us cellular or somebody like that that wouldn't work well, that's a problem that public safety does have, even to this day, interoperability, they call it, okay? But P25, that's a sampling that meets P25. That's how many vendors are out there. What's that do for you? It, it makes it more competitive. When you do do initial installations, you need to do it so that it's competitive across vendors. Next slide. This is an example of what your long-term solutions would be. These are three different types of what they call architectures. The state of Indiana uses the bottom one there. That's the Integrated Public Safety Commission, which is called as the Hoosier Project Safety. It's been around since the mid 90s. It's a core based system. The one on the left is a semi core based system. The one on the right is what's called a network system. The network systems tend to be the most progressive of all systems. They actually, what we operate our cellular devices on also. Next slide. The only reason I show this is because the long-term development, as it says, and I don't know why I didn't take off those other four that are done, four or five to be determined, is you need to make sure that whatever you do in the long-term, that you have that radio that's on the belt of that first responder, a police officer, fireman, EMS, that that radio can communicate across systems and can communicate to LTE type systems. The technology is already there, okay? So that is what your long-term really needs to have include, included into it. And that's what K County is doing next door. Next slide. One thing that's extremely important on that is that we're gonna talk about things related to the CapEx, which is the capital um, investment that's made. But you always have to think of the operating investment. Years ago, I remember Morgan County, Indiana, when I did their radio system, I remember the chief deputy saying, you know, I want to put a system in because I have a mobile radio in my car that's been there for 25 years and I want a system that does the same thing. I said, there is no such thing. <laughs> I said, technology advances so quickly. That's the reason I set myself up on my phones for two-year plans. That's the maximum. And, and actually, I got that one to pull too. <laughs> so <laughs> good for eyesight duration. <laughs> so, so anyway, uh, you have to make sure that whatever you do, you're going to have operating funds to be able to operate over time. Okay, so that's an important thing to do. Next slide. In fact, we'll skip through the, the these next three because I don't have that inventory up there. There you go. Now let's get to your system. Your system is on the far right side. It is a, um, it looks kind of chaotic, but it's not actually. It's a simulcast system, which is like the middle one. The middle one is like the best, that, that concept of the simulcast. That means that when I'm sending a signal out from dispatch, it's going across, doesn't matter, it didn't do any discrimination. It's going across everywhere in the county equally, period. That's it, okay? And that's sort of what you have but you have what's called an analog-based system, which means that when a wave comes here and a wave comes here and they collide with one another, well, you don't have signal, okay, because they're doing collisions. It's just real simple in the physics. There's other things called the unicast far left over there. Basically, I remember growing up, because um, I always dealt with radio systems, so I, should, I should admit I grew up with three generations of state policemen. <laughs> so, and that was one of the details my father always had and so one thing that they always did was a unicast system there was one tower it was at the post and that post actually projected for enough power for those troopers that actually go to that post real simple 
the technology has advanced. We really can't do it that way anymore. Next slide. These are the towers that you have at the various locations. Some of them you're pushing a signal, some of them you're receiving a signal. Next slide. This is just look for visual. We did what's called a uh, talk into dispatch and talk out from dispatch. And, and as we knew, a lot of the VHF signaling failed. Okay, and there's a reason, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Next slide. This is the IPSC system, which that's the state of Indiana system, as I mentioned. It's the 800 system. Now, the thing is, they put up one tower in your county. And, and, and we gotta remember, when these towers were originally put up by the state, they were put up for the state troopers. And they're put up because of the mobiles they had in their car. Well, the mobiles project 40 watts of power. That portable on their hip only projects seven watts of power, okay? Big difference. So they were more of that orientation. They did the initial investment and I have clients that said, we want to expand the, the state system. Well, you're gonna have to put up additional towers to propagate that signal because the 800 fre frequency doesn't go very far. A VHF that you currently use does go a long way. As I gave the example, it's a long way, okay? Go ahead, next one. Okay, here's what you currently have. This propagation map, you have actually six sites and, and the blue areas are actually where we're having collisions, I would, the best way to term it, of the signaling. So when you're projecting it out for all those locations where it's hitting, that's where you're having a lot of dead signals. Now there's other areas of topography, like if you have it, if you're down in a ditch, the signal may go past you, things like that. But a lot of it is collision of signals and things that are occurring within your current simulcast type system. Next slide. These are your two solutions. I'll get to the last, these are one of the half a dozen slides left. Next slide. I went ahead and ran a power on having one tower. And that one tower here in Columbia City, I think J and K Communications owns that tower. Okay. And it's it's over, it's actually close to 400 feet. They have two towers there. And you need to be up at the, at least the, like the 280, the 300 foot level because that way you get above everything and you project down. That way you don't have silos in the way of the signal, you don't have big trees in the way. You know, that's the reason some places that use like water towers, sounds like a great idea. Well, those water towers are maybe 150, 160 feet tall. Well, I own a farm and I have sycamores that are that tall, okay? And it, that, that impedes the signal, okay? So you get above it, okay? So what I did is I went ahead and ran the evaluation on that. The only thing that really had a big hole was down in South Whitley. So I ran just to have a 10 watt antenna down there, just 20 foot off the ground. And it's because there, there's that elevator down there, the grain elevator, signal is hitting it and it's shadowing that cone back there, okay? So something would actually just project there, okay? Next slide. Here's what your short term solution is. Short term solution is you already own your VHF channels and let's simplify. Well, the simplification is you go ahead at 280 foot level, okay? We projected at 275 watts. And then at 20 foot level, we do two 10 watts down there in South Whitley. And it's a directional antenna, so it doesn't project anything up to the northeast so that we don't have that collision effect and cancel signals out. It's only going down to that part of South Whitley that, that can't get a reception. So what you do, you go ahead and get it up at that 280 foot level and what I did is I went to the vendor, had a very poignant discussion with that vendor here in Columbia City. Good or bad, I, I know them. Um, they're actually a good company. Um, but I sat down with the owner and one of the project managers. And I said, this is what you're going to have to do. What do you mean this is what we're going to have to do? I said, you're going to have to correct the problem. And, and the commissioners wanted me to make sure I was very poignant on that. And I was. And they admitted to that. And they said, we will, we will do anything RF oriented. Okay, now I need something else. You have an asset that we need to use. You know, it's, it's 400 feet tall. I need it up there 300 feet. And so we did a marketed evaluation of it. And you know, when you're up that high, normally you're running about 280 to 350 per lineal foot, vertical height. That's very expensive per month, okay? I was able to get them down to a dollar a foot. So basically it's $300 a month, okay? Which is a third of the actual market price, okay? 
And uh, because they're here in town, they want to make sure this is right. So the short-term solution is, is that we go down item one, I mentioned that, item two, the FCC, we've already started that process to get what ERP is, that's your maximum watts. Okay, so they were willing to give us, you know, go up 20 watts. Right now your license is for 80 watts per channel. Well, you need more, you need to push that signal out. So we're going through the process now of getting all the outside fire departments outside of this county, we gotta make sure that they're okay with it, okay? And that's what we're doing right now. And, and we've always had success on that because that, you do that for interoperability. The item three there, to enter into a agreement eventually, you know, if this is the route you wanna go, um, you would enter into agreement of a yearly agreement with a guaranteed price for five years. That's why I was telling you a dollar a foot, $300 a month, okay? So that is what you would need to do. And then we have to verify there is fiber at that site and that fiber does come into the city. We have to verify, Sheriff, that it goes to your place because that will be the connection between dispatch and over to that tower. Otherwise, it takes a small microwave hop instead, okay? But we will verify that, and I'm 90% sure that that's already in existence, okay? Um, item four, the things that the county would have to do, which would be assets to them. I already told you that that vendor, we had our very poignant meeting, and they're going to do everything related to RF, put up the new antenna, the new coaxes, the new combiner, the new RF signaling systems, um, all that but you would need to come up with a shelter and a gen set, okay? Because those are assets you can use somewhere else. For your long-term, you may wish to pull those and put them at a new site when you're doing your long-term. So, so that's one thing that we would have to do, come up with those two things. Um, and then, like I said, number five, those are the things that the vendor is gonna provide. The antenna, the cabling, the miners, the routers, the network, all labor, they're doing all that. That costs the county nothing, okay? So that's what I was able to get put in place. So the one thing the county would have to appropriate um, is, or find if they already have one, it's basically an eight by eight shelter and a gen set that's gonna be like 7.5 or 10 kW. You know, those, those little ones you put at houses on, that kind of thing. Next slide. Now here's your long-term solution. This is pretty much the last slide. I got a couple others, but long-term, there's nothing wrong with the VHF wave. The VHF wave, you know, um, has been out there forever. Well, all of it's been out there forever. I mean, God gave us this and that's what we have, okay? So, um, but the VHF wave is not a technology that's for digital. It's like using a slide rule versus using a calculator, okay? Oh, everybody uses calculators. In fact, I don't even remember how to use slide rules, okay? So, so you know, you're at a point where it's like, you don't want to get rid of your VHF, but you need to move everything into technology, meaning you need to put it into an IP-based system. Well, what's an IP-based system? Seven, 800 systems are inherently IP-based systems. So what you do, the five things that you look into is that you expand, either expand the IPSC system or you have your self-owned 7800 system. If you have a self-owned, by default, it will already communicate to the state system because it's the same frequency systems, okay? Same radios, that kind of stuff. Um, and make sure that it has 100% coverage and then also make sure that you have at least six, see there's already allocations to your county that the federal government has put. Nobody's using those frequencies. They're in the 700 band range. Every county had allocations in the state of Indiana as well as every county in the entire nation. And those are yours to use if you're gonna establish your own system. You know, we just pull them up. Item two, you would end up with two sites. Either it's sites that you're gonna to have to work out some rental issues or build your own sites. In K County, they decided to build their own sites because they're gonna expand their broadband on those sites also, okay? Um, those would be at least 300 feet tall and the three would have to be strategically located you know, east-west from each other so that they actually can cover the entire county. And they're gonna have to be at least 300, like I said, because this the 700 frequency, it's not like a VHF, it's shorter distance, okay? Item three, you need to have a permanent bridge in place. Right now, you don't have really a bridge in place because the 800 frequencies that you do utilize are state-owned.
and they don't want you to bridge across you know vhf into the state-owned channel because it clogs up the channel now when you own your own channel you can actually do that and then the way you get away from not clogging it is as i mentioned you would have six channels only one of those would bridge between a radio that a fireman has or a police officer is using vhf and a radio that's an 800 radio they don't they, they can talk directly to each other because once you go digital it's basically a wave file no different than music we listen to then you can translate it into anything so you do that permanent bridge situation item four develop a greater coverage um, basically a greater power issue one thing you can't do with the vhf wave it goes a long way but it doesn't penetrate buildings very well seven eight hundred does because it's a shorter wave okay that's the reason these things right here operate off 900 megahertz up to 2.9 gigahertz okay so they can penetrate buildings a little bit better than a public safety radio so you actually make sure that you have what's called these losses 8 db 12 db 18 and 24 those are actually losses to know that the system is designed so that when you go into a school which will have at least an 18 db loss that you're actually designed it to be able to go into that school and not have a compromise on that radio okay that's the big thing you want don't want that radio to be compromised that's the emergency logistics and that's the lifeline of that first responder item five and this i have mentioned before is that lmr to lte now i say nr deployment nr everybody's heard of 5g 5g is known as the new radio system okay that's what nr stands for it won't be lte anymore long-term evolution any radio you put in or any system you put in needs to have that capability of cross communication because there's a thing called FirstNet out there now. Came out in 2012, was actually given to, or not given, but uh, through a competitive process, AT&T got it, and they got 20 meg on the 700 megahertz band of LTE, so they call it FirstNet. So they already know, the feds already know that things are migrating. I mean, why is it that I can't get pictures? Why is it I can't get locations? Why is it I can't get a lot of stuff that I get on my cell phone through the public safety radio system? Well, you can, but you got to have that translation in place, okay? So that's item five. On the right, that gives cost estimates based on what would actually happen. If you have to do two new sites, about 330 grand a piece by the time you get the tower, the generator, the compound, all that stuff putting in place. Anyway, going through that entire thing, you're probably gonna have a $2.9 million expense that you would be looking at to actually put in a new long-term radio system, okay? And the next, and then the last slide, not the last, but the next one. This is the action list, which I already talked about. We've already, item one, that's already been negotiated with the that vendor. Um, so if I need to represent this, in January with the new administration. I, I'm more than glad to do it because there is a dire need that this needs to happen. But we are, like I said, in a gentleman's agreement. Now I'm publicly presenting it, what we're doing with that vendor in town to be able to get your short-term solution going. The ERP, we're doing that anyway. You need to have license on those two frequencies that is higher power than 80 watts, okay? So it needs to be up there closer to 300 watts in license power. Item four, remote sites. One thing I forgot to mention is that you're projecting your signal from right here in Columbia City, but you're not going to lose all those others. That little seven watt radio can't make it all the way back to Columbia City, for example. So all those other sites that you already have deployed will stay there, but they'll be receiving information only. And then their microwave connection, that way dispatch can still get all those signals back. Okay, so that's how that would work um item four that you know that takes care of the overlap since we're not going to have transmit item five the cost factors we've already gone through item six so a lot of these things we've already gone through one thing i haven't done is seven and eight which is the um the inventory of your current architecture meaning you guys actually own transmitters uh routers and receivers and antennas already at six locations okay and they're going to stay there but we need to make sure we have that asset inventory because in any long-term solution, how much of that can we repurpose, okay? That was one thing we wanna make sure we look into. The only reason I'm, I looked at subscriber inventory issues on IM7 there is because 
as you have to replace radios, handheld radios, or maybe the radio in the, in the uh, fire apparatus or in a police commission, um, as you're doing that, make sure that it's being replaced in a competitive bid process. That's the first thing I always recommend. And the other one is that it's actually getting a technology that's more advanced, that you're not getting a radio that's actually already supposed to be off the market next year because I've had those situations too, okay? Gentlemen, that's pretty much what I have. The last slide just says questions. <laughs> no, no, thank you very much. So I, I think I, I think that you just have to start with the short-term solution. Yes, oh yes. And the long-term solution. And, and I don't, sitting here, I don't think we can deal this group can deal with the short-term solution. So hopefully Chad's heard it and understands it and, and they'll they'll deal with it, but it does need to happen. Absolutely, I am more welcome to come back in a little more detail. This was a quick overview, okay? It's a dire need, emergency logistics. That's the first of your first responders, you know, so. Yeah, and that, I don't remember the, the price of the short-term solution, but it wasn't staggering at all. If you have to go out and buy a small shelter and buy a small gen set, you're probably looking at about 16 grand. Yeah, and, on. and an air conditioner. Yeah, right? yeah. You need, in, 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 for exactly. the summertime, yeah. 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 So, yeah, okay. okay. Well, I appreciate it, Terry. It's been wonderful working with you. We appreciate going through the broadband with us and now through the radio system with us. And uh yeah, I wish you I wish you luck in the future. Sir, so same to you, gentlemen. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. Appreciate it. <clears throat>
number 14. This is that's that's a clean one. Okay. So we'll have All right, so what we have in front of us is an ordinance establishing standards and condition for the issuance of Whitley County Highway Road and right of way work permits and the establishing of service charges thereof. So um, do, do you want to you want to go through it with us? Mm -hmm. um, well, I, I made some notes on uh, highlights. Good. Thank you. Um, I think it's a great like, document. Like um, practically every county, uh, certainly around us, if not in the state, um, we're, we're catching up there and establishing fees and fines for right away cut and void permits. Mm -hmm. uh, I can I can say in the last few months. Well, between last summer and fall, I personally witnessed at least two uh, utility contractors out uh, working in our right way without permits. And we did a similar thing uh, with the drain board uh, for encroachments on county regulated drains. We wanted to stop these people from working without permits. And that's our goal. And, so obviously the fines are a little heftier than the fees. And so that, that is the, the primary issue with establishing this. Um, what we have also included with, um, with fees is uh, we can uh, now justify accepting a digital version and making our own copies um, as part of that fee. And it also cannot take the uh, commissioner's time in a public meeting. Um, we, the majority of the simple boring permits would be approved by me and or the drain board uh, with your authority, obviously by the ordinance. And then if someone wanted to do an open cut then that would have to come back to the commissioners, but this way you guys don't have to sit in front of everybody signing sure. three copies of six right away cut permits. Kind of unnecessary. So kind of move into new technology. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. We're, we're, it's uh, it's time. We're getting caught up. With, it's uh, time. Yeah. Yeah. This is uh you know the the from this is just voluminous and it's costly. So I, I appreciate your, your work you've done. And I, I would concur that after it's going through everything, it really doesn't need the commissioners to, to sign off on it. It's, it's, it's just redundant. It's formality. Yeah, it's formality, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Staff are the ones that need to review Yeah. Okay. What's that ordinance number? It's 2020-14. And they also wanted to let you guys know Matt did text me and say it is good to go. Oh, so Matt did text me and say it's good oh, to go. Okay. So okay. Just, just so you're aware. Matt texted and said yeah, it's good to go. Okay. From his perspective. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> nope. We talked about this motion this morning, but I don't have it in front of me. So I move we approve Willie County Ordinance Number 2020-14. So what else needs to be okay. in that motion? Okay. I think that's, Pardon me. that's that should cover it because it's 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 streamlined and Matt has Matt has approved it. So I'd make a okay. second to that. Thank you, George. We have a motion and a second. Do we have a further discussion? Hearing none. Uh, we'll uh, we'll start with Tom. Uh, uh, verbalize your thought. Aye. And I'm an aye. George. Aye. Okay, so it votes three to nothing too, except for ordinance number 2020-14. Okay, uh, next uh, I have uh, annual bids. We received those uh, two weeks ago. Um, we did receive four bids that were technically late. Um, 
Two were for heavy equipment rental. Three were for vacant markings. You, you um, got that motion for that? And without, you know, begrudging the, the issue, I could summarize that all four of them were arguably due to postal delivery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, one one yeah. was delivered, addressed to the auditor's office and delivered to the clerk's office. Uh, one was uh, by our issue addressed to the wrong address and the post office held it for 10 days. Uh, so I don't think that it would be fair to exclude these. <laughs> So, um, no, they weren't very late. Yeah, I would, you know, recommend to uh, make a make motion to accept all bids except for the fixed fuel price for the purchase of major for the purchase of major supplies in accordance with our small purchase policy. I, I moved that, and that's exactly what I was going to say, Brandon. <laughs> okay. Okay, we have a. A motion to uh, approve the the annual bids. With, uh, and we've discussed the late the late bids. I'll second. So we have a on the floor. I'll second that. Okay, thank you, George. Okay, we have a second. Okay, all in favor of the motion? Tom. Aye. Don. Aye. George? Aye. Thank you. Okay. Three zip. Okay. Twenty twenty is an even year. That is our bridge inspection year. All of our bridges are inspected every other year. Uh, we've got final report and I have a copy for you that includes uh, the uh, inventory and appraisal form for each bridge, as well as um, maintenance plans. Uh, some of the maintenance work uh, can be done by local forces, some of it by contract, and then a prioritization uh, schedule for uh, major rehabilitations and replacements. So um, we've actually moved forward with a lot of this stuff. We've uh, broke down uh, all of the stuff that we could do with local forces. And we've done a lot of that already since tax sweeping and brush removal, uh, erosion control issues. And then we've had some bigger maintenance issues. Uh, we've got some cheating on tow walls that's rusting away and some other things. And then we've uh, recently completed an overlay on bridge 102 in Colomer and we are working on a replacement on bridge 17 which is on 100 south so um, this plan actually is basically a five-year plan six-year plan so um is that, is, is that bridge on 100 south is that is that under underway that it is yes so here's a copy of that final report for the commissioners for your reference. Okay. Thank you. Called them asking about the rules or put it in the office where it can be viewed. And I believe it can be viewed by anyone, right? Um no, no, not I mean anyone, yes. Yeah. I mean, yes. Yeah. Okay. It's not a line, but you know, no, anyone no. can come in and look at that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um just so you know, uh, I pretty much every year we do this, but because our budget year is not necessarily consistent, like it's not consistent with our bridge construction schedule. So at the end of the year, we have money left over. We're in the middle of a project, just like with Bridge 17. So we encumber the funds. Um, I'll be asking the council to encumber two hundred ninety-two thousand okay. at their January meeting. Um, I just wanted to clarify, I heard a story that someone might have been upset because I didn't apply for community crossings. And I want you 
new and public to know. There's two calls a year for community drop tanks. I did not apply for the second call of 2020, but we were awarded $983,615.58 on the first call. So just shy of a million. Um, the DLGF has released 1782, 1782s, which says that we need to cut our highway budget by 608,000. I'm going to have to work with new commissioners, the county council, county honor, <laughs> trying to come up with a solution to that problem uh, that, that basically amounts to about and this is um mbh only um but that's basically a 20 percent budget cut in mbh Big. and so Big. and i do believe they blame that on uh when covid first started the people weren't driving anywhere and right. so your money depends on gas tax, and and, and I think I think they're I I would say the DLGF is way overboard. I think they've you know that 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 didn't last for much more than sixty days in that way, and, and uh, so I you know I don't know what to say, but I think they were I think they were kind of overboard on their projections. I, I agree one hundred percent. They put a memo yeah. out. Yeah, a few months ago, which is that 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 said, plan on your 2021 revenue to be 80 percent of your 2020 revenue. Mm -hmm. So either they know something we don't. Yeah, it's going to get a lot worse in 21, yeah. or they're just um, I don't know. Just, just in the last two, three days at the most, I I read an article in the papers that. The state underestimated income. Income is, is higher than it was estimated. So, who knows? Maybe it, maybe it'll turn around. It, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. Okay. Um. Uh, was our last meeting or the meeting before? Um, Still last here and talk about our ADA transition plan. Yep. And uh, basically the federal aid project. That was that application was uh, submitted on the 11th, I believe the 11th was a Friday. So that is in process. Um, they are going to, the next step is currently we have to do a presentation for Fort Wayne District CINDOT, which is going to include. A county commissioner, from what I understand, this is my first time going through this, and uh, we'll just have to tout uh, the uh, the benefits and, and the background with our project. Um, per Matt, you have a Title VI policy. And you did that. You did. You did that. Okay. And the last thing on my list, I believe, I believe, I know there's at least two right away. Got permits. Which I do. I have. We're two. submitted prior to our ordinance, so. Okay. 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 I don't think we we'll go. We'll go. Fees. We'll go through those then at this time. You got one, Tom. You want to lead off with that one? <laughs> you boarded across the North 200 East, approximately 33. Says drop footy uh, precision utilities group. It's a Ver Verlin customers, Verlin Detmer. So, well, we approve it. Okay, we have a motion on the four to approve the right of way permit. I'll second it. All, all in favor, Tom? Aye. Don, aye. George? Did we lose him again? He's on there. Okay, we're. Oh, aye. There he is. Aye. Thank aye. You. Okay, thank you. All right, I have a, 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 a permit that's going to 
about three different jobs here, so <clears throat> we'll go kind of quickly through it. Um, it has to it has to do with uh, fiber network for intelligent fiber network by their contractor Deary Electric. Um, the work is going to start approximately 1100 south of Highway 30 on South County Road 600 East, boring approximately 12,902 feet. Does that sound right to you? Uh, yeah. That's a, that goes all the way off to almost to 14. Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. And then boring east along 500, approximately 315 feet, then continuing uh, along south 600 east, 3,800 feet, stopping at State Road 14. So that's... And, and that's the permit, technically the plans were revised at the end of last week because they are not going all the way to State Road 14. They okay. Across the highway. Michael Coles. New Cross Prime property. Okay. okay. Talked about it today. Clear a drainage. Numerous drainage crossings. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'd entertain a motion then. On so the... move, we approve it. Okay. We have a motion to approve the right of way permit for Dairy Electric. I'll second. We have a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Uh, Tom? Five. Don, I. George. I. Thank you. Give us a few minutes. There's a lot of signing here to do. Sure. And there you go, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, Brandon, anything else, please? Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. Yep. Thank you. Certainly been a pleasure working with you. Me too. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to the payroll and accounts payable claims. Um, I had a chance to look them over i saw no problems with them so i would with the claims either payroll or accounts payable so i'd entertain a motion to approve well we approve make, the payroll okay we have a motion a second second uh, all in favor george i'm mean, tom aye. don i george aye thank you Also, will we pay the regular expense claims? Okay, we have a motion to pay the regular uh, accounts payable claims. I'll second. Yes, yeah, second. All in favor? Uh, Tom? Aye. Don? Aye. George? Aye. Okay. We all thank you. And then we have. Oh, I knew there was a paper missing. <laughs> it was missing because it was right in front of me. Bet you're glad to have Tiffany back, aren't you? Yes. You're in a lot. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then we have the uh, previous minutes of the. December the 7th, 2020 meeting. I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes. Well, we approve them as written. 
Second. Okay. okay, we have a motion to approve and a second. All in favor? Tom? Aye. Don? Aye. George? Aye. Thank you. Okay. Is Matt still on with us? He is not. I'm sorry. He he is not. Okay. All right. Good enough. All right. So we'll uh Jana, do you have anything for the um, group? Just thank you both for everything. All right, thank you. Oh, and I guess on a side note, we did receive our 1782 notices, as you know, from what Brandon said. So, okay. that's it. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, okay. <clears throat> well, the last 12 years of my life have been filled with happiness and sadness. That said, I've truly enjoyed serving the citizens of Whitley County during those 12 years. To Mike Schrader, Tom Rethlake, George Shrump, and Tom Western, thank you for your service to the county. It was a pleasure serving with you all. The same goes for the various members of the county council. We haven't always seen eye to eye, but we've always worked out any problems. To uh, Amy Hodges and Pam Smith, thanks so much for making our commissioner time more bearable. I love working with both of you. To Jennifer Shinneberry and Cami Hippenhammer, thank you so much for everything you've done to make our commissioner time better. To all the Whitley County employees, thank you so much for your understanding when times were tough and for going above all to make our lives a lot easier during the pandemic. As a commissioner in charge of the highway department, that was kind of a joke because I never had to worry about it. I never had to lead once uh, Brandon Forrester became the director. I thank all the highway employees for making our roads significantly better. When I first became a commissioner, I was asked to speak about the roads and I said, Whitley County has 700 miles of roads. Most of them are bad, we'll make them better. And we did. To the Concerned Citizens Organization, thank you for educating me about the wind turbine generators and for their support to keep them out of Whitley County. I really thought that wind turbine generators would be a blessing and found out they would most likely be a curse and ruin the Whitley County landscape for a long time. To the residents of Jefferson Township, I know you never believed us, but we would never allow another CFO or CAFO in your township. But that said, you need to make up your minds about growth because it's coming and your township will be the largest growth township in Whitley County. I wish nothing but the best to all the citizens of Whitley County. And I, I uh, look forward to uh, the new commissioners coming in and, and uh, doing their thing. And uh, I thank everybody for electing me three times. So uh, God bless and Merry Christmas. I appreciate it. Anybody from the public have anything they want to say? If not, we'll call adjourned. the meeting adjourned. Don't move. Okay, thank you all.